This is the last video of our amateur knife making series. So in the last video, if you remember, we heat treated our knives and when it came out, it was a black color. Um, the only thing I've done to my knife blank since that video is just sand that layer off. It's a very thin layer just on the surface. It's pretty easy to sand off. And then I've also sanded down this bevel more to a point. The next step for this is to put on a handle. And we also have this one that Mitchell has done that needs a handle. So for our two knives that need handles, we've got some pins. This is eighth inch stainless rod and that'll, that'll fit in there and kind of hold our, our handle on. And then this is a hollow tube pin that will fit in there and will act as kind of a lanyard hole. And then for the knife handle material, we've got buckeye burl and another wood that I don't remember what it is. Make up a name. Zebra Zebra. Zebra Zebra. And then the last piece that we've been missing through this entire process is someone who actually knows what they're doing. Hey. <laughs> How do I... I like to do it one scale at a time. You put this one on there, find out wherever you want your plunge line or your top of your uh, scale to be. And then you'd clamp these together, you'd drill your holes, and then flip it over and do the next one. That's it. <laughs> I don't need a pin on that one. And this is why you drill out your pinholes before you heat treat. He was able to drill those two out, and that one is too close to the blade, which is the section that got hard. Now you just have a two pin knife. Now we've got our profile lined up with the holes. The last step is we just need to decide how we want our handle to end up here because I don't want it to be just that straight line. So I'm thinking that maybe we'll come off of this finger well and curve it up and kind of round that end a bit more. That would curve up about right there. I think that would look that would look pretty decent. So that's probably what we're gonna do. And then we can start to take off all this excess material and start profiling the handle scales. You don't even have actual pins in there. You have Dremel bits holding it together. They're eighth inch <laughs> shank, okay? <laughs> I couldn't find the pin where I put it, so. After a bunch of sanding, I finally got it close. I still need to clean up this front edge because once we glue this handle on there, that's gonna be a lot harder to, to work on. And uh, you got an update for us? I got about a knife and a half over here. <laughs> or half a knife. I broke some scales off and so now I'm trying to get that third pinhole in here to hold it all together. But it's hard in and I've broken like 18 Dremel drim bits. <laughs> I learned from my mistakes. It's my life motto. We've got that front about how I want it enough that I think we're ready to glue it. When I was messing around with this, I did break that piece off, but we can glue that back on there. We want to stick our pins in first mm -hmm. and then apply glue and then slide the, the scales over the top of the pins. While we wait for my knife to cure and for Mitchell to epoxy his, let's get to know our guest. Alex is a local knife maker who started not that long ago. Almost a year. Why did you start making knives? Because Mitch is my neighbor and he gave me a bunch of mess up blanks. <laughs> I've never once messed up. <laughs> 
We cut them out perfect every time. Did you start as bad as we are starting? <laughs> the first four were not great. <laughs> uh how would you would you say we're on like a, a normal trajectory in our learning curve so far yes very much so <laughs> even mitchell <laughs> even mitchell i think there's probably a 20 percent chance your knife will be glued to this table by the time you're done <laughs> i'm willing to take those odds Don't know if that's the recommended method, but... But you're using all the clamps. I meant the hammering your your knife skills on. With a pair of pliers. <laughs> with a pair of pliers. So what do you do with all of your knives that you've made? I've kept none of them. I've sold them all. Really? You yep. haven't kept a single one? Mm -mm. The four blanks that I got from Mitch the first time, those are still in my house, just kind of... The worst a, looking ones? Reminder. <laughs> yeah, mistakes were made. And Alex actually brought some finished products that we can see. Ooh. This is a eighth inch 1095, right? Yep. And it looks like you've got a G10 liner in the handle. Yeah. There it is. You've got some kind of a cap over where the pin is. Nope, that's a carbon fiber pin and so is this black one up here. Oh. Try to hide them. We've got a real mini cleaver and that looks like a micarta handle with brass yeah. pins. Oh, wow, how'd you do that? Just chainsaw files and little files. Just all hand filed. Yep. And this last one, this might, oh, you've got more of that file work done on the spine around the handle. That might look like a familiar design. He stole my idea. 1095, 3 16 The handle is... Babinga. Babinga with a blue G10 liner in it. Yep. Wow, that is really cool looking. Alex is actually doing a giveaway of this knife on his Instagram. And if you want to follow Alex or if you want to try and win this knife or both, just go to my page, like the last picture I posted with this, and tag three friends. What is your Instagram? It's AM Knife Making. And I'll have a link to that down in the description as well. And if you want to become a knife maker like Alex, you can go to our website, waterjetknives.com, buy a knife blank, get started. Or if you're not creative, if you don't feel like you want a project, you can buy a finished <laughs> knife from someone like Alex. Place your orders. He can only make one every hour, so. <laughs> Not quite that fast yet. <laughs> Typically, you would take a hacksaw and cut these pins off. We don't have a hacksaw because we aren't prepared. So we're going to cheat and use our belt grinder to grind these pins down real quick. And then we'll start hand sanding this handle. thousand years later. That took so long. It's far from perfect, but it's good enough for my first fully 100% finished knife. Although, We've got one step left. The reveal. So Alex said that he uses a linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil. We've got some used some, canola oil. Some boiled canola <laughs> oil with dead bugs in it. <laughs> so this is going to have to do. Ooh. Look at that. I still like mine better. Parents pride, is yeah. that it? There's a lot of pride going into making your own <laughs> knife. I've decided I'm not selling this. I'm keeping it. 
and then I can know uh, where I started. I feel I feel like anybody who starts making knives has to keep their first one. I think that's a good rule. You can sell numbers two through 30 plus, but keep number one. Keep number one. That's what I'm doing. That's what you should do too.